All right, hello, hello, Scorpios. Scorpios, this is for your uh, full month of February 2024. I just need to start really quickly and say there's so much Piscean energy coming through. Uh, so keep in mind, this could also be rising sign, moon signs. So I saw 310 twice while I was shuffling for you. And then I also saw Taurus energy, 427. Um, let's see, what else? 5-5. Five, five. So um, all I can say is when I shuffled the last Unicorn Tarot guide, or the for you specifically, I was seeing, so we'll see what comes out, right? But I was seeing three of wands. So someone waiting actually for something to be done and over with. Uh, something that was kind of maybe hurtful, maybe feeling like there could have been backstabbing, betrayal. And then getting a sense of being done waiting. Once you find something out, it's like the final straw in it. And then there's a lot of work. There seems to be like taking action um, and possibly feeling like a heavy burden. I mean, <laughs> what doesn't? So... We'll just see. So maybe something about March. This is February's energies, but 310 was showing uh, quite a bit. I also saw 319 and 321. Okay, but this is February. So let's get some charms. I have uh, the Last Unicorn Tarot. I've been reading out of the Last Unicorn book. Um, I brought in the Astro Codes, the Magic of the Unicorns, Star Codes, Astro, and the Sacred Forest. Also the Sixth Instinct and the Stone deck with the crystals. And uh, I decided to split it into two for you. And I stopped on Cavanasite. I believe this is how we say it. Cavanasite because it's so pretty. It's one of my favorites. So I put it over by this Piscean energy. So when we look at the month, I'm going to say this is going to be your first half where we're in this Aquarian energy. And then as we shift over into Piscean for February. And of course, we do have Valentine's Day. Okay, um, so I'm going to read this when I get over there <laughs> and see what a few of these are. But this is the stone deck. Um, I was trying to think if I got names for you. I don't think I did get names this time. And I'm not 100% positive. This kind of looks like citrine, but we'll see. I want to peek. Oh, it's Libyan Tektite. Oh, wow. Libyan Gold Tektite. Libyan Glass. Ooh, banish your blahs. Ooh, that's emerald under there, even though that doesn't look like emerald. But Libyan glass, nice. Egyptian, uh, from like a lightning bolt on the sand. It's very, very beautiful. Um, rare, it's clearly it's uh, similar to the Moldavite. Anyways, banish your blahs. And then the Cavanasite, which is over here, is also expanding your consciousness, right? Okay, and what's underneath there? That one looks like it might be amber. It's really interesting because you have blue and orange. It's honey calcite. Okay, oh, wow. I love honey calcite too. It's so pretty. Wow. Okay, so Scorpios, we got some crystals and rocks for you. We're going to get some tarot and some sacred forest. And uh, let's get some charms first. This has been fun and some yogi tea messages that I'm going to grab. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Everyone, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't put this back. I don't know why I have this, but you're getting this again. So lucky brand. If you're reading this, go for it. Lucky numbers are 33, 34, 42, 43, 69, and five. This one came out before. <laughs> I can't remember which, which video, uh, but I threw this little thing in there. I'm such a dork. I, with the rest of my little yogi tea messages. So I'm a, the unknown is where all outcomes are possible. Enter it with grace. Here we go. Into the unknown. Scorpio is right up your alley, huh? <laughs> we all want to be understood, to be acknowledged, and to be loved. Wow. If you're reading this, go for it. So maybe that's your sign as well. So maybe that comes out when there is something you're wanting to go for and you're, you've been waiting for it. Like waiting for the right timing. No way I got seashell here. Oh my gosh, this seashell looks so different. I think there's colors. I don't think I've seen this one before. It looks like there's like purple and white on this seashell. Seashell. Hmm. So some mer mermaid. I'm going to put it by the... I'm actually going to put it right here by the astro, card, or astro codes. Uh In the Piscean energy. No way. So And even this, the starfish. 
So I'm putting the starfish over here too. It's like the orange, no way. So the orange, I'm gonna sit here with the sacred forest. Although it doesn't really go with forest theme, now does it? Not really, but oh well. No way, and then you're getting the crown. Oh, this is like the high priest. High, high, uh, bishop. You know what I mean? Look at that, it's got like the cross on it, this crown. Wow, this is a cool charm. Hmm, I wanna put it right here on the last unicorn. Then we've got the star, which I'm also going to put over there because this is Aquarian energy, hope, healing, right? I'm going to set it over here. And then you got the two hearts. So uh, I think this is turning out beautiful. I'm giving them to each, right? This is more the water energy. And then we're in that air energy of Aquarian. And then we got the Valentine's Day. So before I continue with this, I want to spotlight Valentine's Day. And if you're watching this in February or um, something like that, <laughs> then um, look in my channel because I'm going to unbox the Love Oracle of Eden. I've kind of been sharing it and telling everybody. Um, I'm planning once, let's see, I only have a couple more videos to do and then I might be unboxing it even before, I don't know, right before we actually get into February. So it is like the 26th when I'm doing your video for February. But anyways, look how beautiful this is. It's about relationships, right? Um, partners, romantic interests, family, friends, ourselves, and other loved ones, okay? So not, it's relationship, right? So understanding that. Okay, not just only romantic. I also got the sixth instinct. I kinda wanna start with that. It's been kind of fun to start with the sixth instinct. Let's see what the Scorpios have. I shuffled all these for you before I start, right? No way, psychic downloads, wow. Spiritual gift that allows access of higher information, guidance, light, energy codes to enhance spiritual wisdom. Right, like this is even in that mind's eye, the crown, the third eye, getting these psychic downloads, getting guidance through that way, higher information, even with the Libyan glass. Wow, take tight. Wow, okay, that's just what's underneath there, but I'm gonna uh, shuffle them. I already shuffled the whole bunch. I really like shuffling these ones though, guys. They feel good. They, they have such a nice flow. Like, oh, I just... I'm like, oh, this is part of the reason I enjoy doing this. I love the shuffling of it. Yeah, yeah. Poker, poker. Fill me in. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, Texas, hold on. Let's play some gin and rummy. <laughs> just kidding. We're playing tarot and oracle at this time. Okay, it stopped shuffling. That was my sign that to stop shuffling. And let's do four. Whew, four Scorpios. So... Let's just get some fun sixth instincts for the Scorpios for the month of February. These could be things you already know about yourself or new things that maybe you're starting to notice or sense. Or it can give more description for different uh, uh, Scorpios, right? So understanding there's rising sign, Venus sign. And if there's like Piscean with that, holy crap, yeah. Okay, highly sensitive, emotional empath. Wow, the crown. It fell right here on the last unicorn tarot guidebook. So after I read these, I am gonna read a snippet out of the last unicorn, uh, the story here, um, Peter S. Beagle. And it's been helping to understand this tarot deck as well, if you understand the story and the players and reading it a little differently. So it's been fun. Uh, it's something I, I enjoy doing. I hope you don't mind. You're, you're welcome to, you know, fast forward through. But um, for this month of February, for every sign I've been reading, you know, a page or two to kind of get a clue in, you know, whether it has anything to do with anything, I don't know. It'll be for you to interpret and decide, okay? So, highly sensitive individual who have a keen ability to sense what people around them are thinking and feeling. The beauty of knowing this is that because when we can feel... Um, someone's anxiety or worry or different, you can sense something. Um, I've seen a lot of Taurus actually that can do this, which is interesting. But um, your you can know how to even move your body posture so you're not if they feel threatened. Uh, you know what I mean? Or get down, move them to a different place, or ask them the right question. There's an ability to be able to, because we want them to feel relaxed and calm, because then we feel relaxed and calm. 
you know? And so it's, that's also the beauty of understanding this is who you're dealing with. Right. But also, um, hmm, you can, there are those, you know, that are, um, hmm, what's the word? When someone becomes more like a vampire, an energetic vampire, or even having some narcissism, or uh, I, it's usually with the covert narcissist, I kind of see as well. But um, they're unhealed, right? And you can are, are you can even sense sometimes they can literally, if they are yucky inside, they can make you feel nauseous and sick. Um, and then sometimes when they just start speaking, it could actually give you headaches. And if they're um, highly toxic in their energy uh yeah and sometimes you don't realize it you know you might so I I'm going to share a little story I had this moment where I actually kind of got away from somebody like I moved states <laughs> I'm all, I moved states uh and I hadn't seen him gosh I don't even know how long it was six to nine months and I'm not going to go into the details of how it all played out and why all of a sudden they saw some picture of me looking all good or something and was like, oh, wow, well, I got to go. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, you know, hey, buddy, buddy. Um, And so, you know, I'm nice and kind and I generous. And uh, the distance I, I saw then that p person, whoa, that, that, that was the end of it for me. Like that coming together, um, I never like... I literally had an outburst and said, I can't heal you. <laughs> and, and oh my goodness, it was, but I literally got physically ill. And the, and I was just like, no, no. And it turned kind of gross, but you know, it needed to be done and over with. And it was uh, having that space and distance, then them coming back around after I had done more healing or, you know, um, being able to detach away from them, then I could really, that's even what understanding a detox from a person or a cell, you know, or foods or things. And then when you reintroduce it to your life, you can see how it truly affects you. The person, the communication, the food. Okay. I don't know why I'm telling you that, but understand this. No way. I'm perfectionist. <laughs> this one came through with the Libra. So maybe some of you have Libra moons. Um, I mean, which might make sense, but you don't have to, you could also be Libra with Scorpio, vice versa. I also see this as Virgo popping in for you. The gifts of an analytical mind and strong pattern recognition skills, extensively high standard of themselves and others. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and what I'm saying with something like this is, um, you need to be able to also let go of certain things. You know what I mean? Like, because perfectionism is per, is an illusion. Um, but when you are uh, really sensitive, then you have high standards. You can't have people or things around you because it uh, it's about self-love too. And um, recognizing other people's patterns too, right? There's a lot of wisdom with this. So there's Virgo, like I said, maybe even Gemini or Aquarius. Okay, moons for some of you. That's what I'm seeing. Interesting with the perfectionist. Clearly, it's like this Virgo energy of making it perfect. Okay, um, I'm going to set that here. I don't know why. I'm going to set, we'll probably go to tarot first, but let's see. Let's set this little perfectionist one. And then this one flew over here. So over by this Piscean energy. No way, and physical empath. Wow. So literally, you can feel their sickness even or their ailments. Um, there was a time, so I brought this up, I think, with Sagittarius as well as Libra. So, and even that Piscean energy, right? Um, but where one of my the hip, so I also really tune into what part of the body it's in, what side of the body it's in. Uh you know, what organ or, you know what I mean? Where in the body, because that can also show, um, what type of thing. So a lot of times it is emotions or stress or, you know, whether it be food, um, other people, but so like, I'm noticing like right here, feeling it on the shoulders. And right now there is just, there's a tiny tinge. Oh, I just twisted and popped it. So it feels good now, but, um, 
it's more of like uh, right around the shoulder blade of the, the back shoulder blade. Um, anyways, you can feel these things, right? Feeling symptoms of others' illness, sympathy pains for someone in labor even, or even inconsistent energy levels, or you can feel depleted. Hmm. Wow. Okay, Scorpios. So keep that in mind. And to really understand what is yours and what is someone else's, especially if you are in tune with these as your instincts. Let's see one more. And Mars. Look at that. That's your that's yours, right? The urge to assert the self and the sex drive, will, energy, and drive. Okay, Mars is. Scorpios, this is also like your ruling planet, right? As well as Aries. Um, and then we've got, you know, Scorpio's a ruler of the sex. <laughs> I love the sex. Uh, the action with that, that um, obsession sometimes as well, okay? So that can be sometimes some of the, and the, uh, well, the Scorpios are rulers of the, the genital area. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm, so maybe even you can sense different things of people, hmm, with a ovarian thing or something even, hmm. Because it is like the sex organs as well. So understanding that. Okay. Well, fascinating, guys. That's fascinating. Okay. I'm going to open the last unicorn for you. And let's see where we're starting. Wow. 72 and 73. Wow. Right at chapter five. Damn. Here we go. That's what it said right there. Damn. Oh, it says dammy. Dammy. Damn. I don't know. Password. Give me the password. What's the password? So this could be something to do with, I see damn your eyes. I have the password 10 times over. What? Someone want the password. What's the passcode? Uh, it's 7273. <laughs> Maybe it was one of your lucky numbers. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we also got 910 here. So there's Cancer of Virgo. I'm also seeing the Taurus energy. Maybe even some Leo. But this is chapter five. I open it right up to chapter five, guys. You're the first one that I've gotten to this, that I've read any of this. Jack. No way. Jack. All right. All that Schmendrick remembered later of his wild ride with the outlaws was the wind, the saddle's edge, and the laughter of the jingling giant. He was too busy brooding over the ending of his hat trick to notice much else. Now, Smendrick is uh, the magician, the novice apprentice magician even, understand this. To me, this is also some Gemini, could be Cancer sign. I'm also seeing, for some of you, like I said, or the Virgo. Um, Jack, interesting. I'm, I'm also seeing like grandfather energy or something like this. Maybe even Libra or Taurus, okay? <coughs> Too much English, hmm. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to continue reading now. He was too busy brooding over the ending of his hat trick to notice much else. Too much English, he suggested to himself, overcompensation. But he shook his head, which was difficult to, in his position. The magic knows what it wants to do, he thought, bouncing as the horse dashed across a creek. But I never know what it knows. Not at the right time, anyway. I'd write it a letter if I knew where it lived. I'm getting the song by, like, uh, The White Stripes and Hello Operator, give me number nine, because I'm seeing seven, two, and the nine, five, nine, even, five, ten, um, and it's Jack and Meg, right? Hello Operator. I don't know why, but that's what you get, okay? Okay, here we go. Brush and branches raked his face, and owls hooted in his ears. The horses had slowed to a trot, then to a walk. A high, trembling voice called out, Halt, and gave the password. So this is out riding horses, even. Hmm. Damn. Here we go, Jack jingly muttered. He scratched his head with a sound like sawing, raised his voice and answered, A short life and a merry one, here in the sweet greenwood, jolly comrades united to victory plighted. Liberty, the thin voice corrected. To liberty, plighted. The L sound makes it all the difference. Not victory, it's liberty. 
Thank ye to liberty plighted, comrades united. Na, na, I said that. A short life and a merry one, jolly comrades. Nah, that's not it. Jack jingly scratched his head again and groaned. To liberty plighted. Give me a little help, will ya? Will ye? All for one and one for all, the voice said, ob obligizing. Can you get the rest yourself? All for one and one for all. I haven't, the giant shouted. All for one and one for all. United we stand, divided we fall. He kicked his horse and started on again. An arrow squealed out of the dark, sliced a wedge from his ear, nicked the horse of the man riding behind him, and skittered away like a bat. The outlaws scattered to the safety of the trees, and Jack Jingly yelled the rage. Damn your eyes. I gave the password ten times over. Let me only get my hands on e. We changed the password while you were gone, Jack, came the voice of Sentry. It was too hard to remember. Ah, you changed the password, did ye? Jack Jingly dabbed his bleeding ear with a fold of Smendrick's cloak. And how was I to know that, ye brainless, tripleless, liverless get? Don't get mad, Jack, the sentry answered, soothing. You see, it doesn't really matter if you don't know the new password because it's so simple. You just call like a giraffe. The captain thought of himself. Call like a giraffe? The giant swore till even the horses fidgeted with embarrassment. Ye ninny, a giraffe makes no sound at all. The captain might as well have us call like a fish or a butterfly. I know, that way nobody can forget the password, even you. Isn't the captain clever? There's no limit to the man, Jack Jingley said wonderingly. But see here, what's to keep a ranger or one of the king's men from calling like a giraffe when ye hail him? Aha, the sentry chuckled. That's where the cleverness of it is. You have to give the call three times, two long and one short. Too long and one short. Ah, well, tis no more foolish than the time he'd have no password at all and shot any who answered the challenge. Too long and one short. Right. He rode on through the trees and his men trailed with him. Wow. Okay, so 74 and 75. I don't know. That was fascinating. Very interesting. I don't even remember who Jack Jingley is. Maybe he's not in the movie. I've only seen the movie. So let's just see. This is a perfectionism. So I'm just going to say up front, I apologize if this isn't perfect. But, you know, I let it flow. I let it go. And that's the way I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go to the crystals now before we jump into the tarot. Okay, and like I said, you had this Libyan gold tech type to banish the blahs. When to use it? When your get up and go has ghosted you. What is it? 28 million year old Saharian desert glass only found in, you guessed it, the Sahara Desert. The gem is yellow, but far from mellow. Who needs it? The navel gazing and brooding, binge watchers, anyone looking to hit the street with some extra swagger. The cancer signs. Where to put it? Hold Libyan glass tech tight. It says, or this card at your center just above the navel and get some goals. Seriously make a list. Then call on the fiery, beyond ancient energy of this stone to help you break through the burning desire to binge watch the day away. Wow, so binge watching the day away. So needing some motivation, some passion, some drive, you know? Uh, there's a little hair right here. I gotta get that off. <laughs> All right, then we have emerald under there. Point your heart towards grace. Mm. Venus mount. When you've temporarily lost the courage to love and be loved, when you're in need of a total refresh, open your heart to limitless possibilities with emerald. See, this is so, this is like a raw piece of emerald. This is not what I envision when I look at emerald. So I'm not quite sure what that is in here. Uh, so it says, aestheticians or bohemians, epicureans, transcendentalists. Hmm. One of the four precious gemstones, emerald radiates with a wet, lush, verdant energy. Historically, emerald is associated with love, beauty, and sex. 
So if you're into any of that, oh my God, it sounds like right up your alley. Just kidding. I don't know. But we've got love and beauty there. So some Venus like and some some Libra and Taurus stuff too. So if you're into any of that, you might want to associate yourself with this saturated green gem. So interesting enough, the other stuff about emerald, uh, follow the emerald brick road or the emerald city, the yellow brick road to the emerald city. Oh, look at that. This is the hard desert to the emerald city. Oh, wow. And we got something. I, I wonder if this is pyrite. What is this? What is this? It's shaped in a hex. It is. It's pyrite. And then we got some tourmaline. Nice. Call on your core power. This is even help for um, chronically lethargic. Anybody sleeping on their potential. This is fool's gold, right? On that romantic weekend away from the kids. And whenever the energy to power through feels shrouded in dark matter. Oh, just saying. Oh my goodness. It works wonders where you need a little boost. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh boy. I always thought of this as like giving you like extra like for, uh, it says like beautiful things like you baby. <laughs> like you baby. Pyrite is fool's gold. It's metallic sulfide mineral. It's blinging, confident vibes and often perfect cubic, perfect cubic structure align us with Nature's power to give energy to amazing, beautiful things like you, baby. Just saying. Pirates often used near the solar plexus or the will center, but it works wonders anywhere you need a little boost of masculine energy. For example, on the fellas, the low, low abdomen. Just saying. Oh, this is so crazy. I'm sorry. Scorpios. Oh, my goodness. It's perfect. It's so perfect for you. <laughs> And then the final one is this is a black tourmaline there is. And that is feeling protected and protecting your light. Everyone needs it, right? Um, I have over here, I have the tourmalated quartz. So I work with that too. It, it helps the, with the psychos or the crazies. Grounding black tourmaline is slightly magnetized, semi-precious gemstone with a reputation for protecting a delicate psyche from a case of the crazies and establishing powerful energetic boundaries between you and all the zombies out there. Where to put it? Besides your doors to keep emotional vampires out on your person, in your pocket, everywhere. Anytime you take public transportation, find yourself in a crowd. Um, hear that sucking sound of a coworker or a family member or a malignant demon taking more from you than you're giving, than they are giving back. Whoa, so... I am going to, because you have this emotional empath there, I'm seeing these as all very important. Maybe there's been a drainage in your energy, your mojo, whatever. Okay. Um, and that's what I'm seeing. Maybe it's about protecting yourself, getting some, um, some passion back in your life, some, some movement, you know, like getting out of the blouse so you're not just watching you know i mean it, there's a time to just chill and watch netflix but you know maybe you're desiring to have some type of passion to like a, that energy that mars energy right okay we're gonna go over here to the tarot and the oracles with this perfectionist card perfect okay let's start with the oracle cards before i hit the tarot okay with the two hearts Maybe even especially Valentine's Day. I don't know. There's two hearts here. To me, that's a beautiful symbol of love, couple. You know, one is bigger than the other, though. That's okay. Ascension lift, three, nine. Prepare for rapid spiritual growth and be ready for opportunities, right? Look at this. I'm loving how all the animals are tuning in. You've got hummingbird here, new creativity. You even got the fox. This is also about... Um, camouflage about romance then you've got the peace the serenity the messages the independence of the kitty cat and then of course the magic of the unicorn so piscean i'm saying something big for you being to be honest like i said march seems so spotlighted you know, so whatever's going on right now it's really pushing you forward to something big going on in march or something to do with pisces like i said three nine the twelve Maybe even there's Gemini or Sagittarius. Maybe something in your dreams 
that like I said, these this 12th house energies and communication, even with siblings, neighbors, people in your this is beautiful because this is like learning. You know what I mean? This is college level stuff. So we got Gemini Sagittarius with this Piscean energy for you. Um, very fascinating. Like someone like learning, taking it to a different level, even college level, um, higher learning in your own community around the neighborhood and going wherever the nectar is, right? Wherever you're, you're being drawn to for this, this learning. That's beautiful. So this is Diana Cooper's uh, Marshall Lynn Krujit is the uh, or the artist. Wow, and then we've got going with the flow. So this one came through just barely with the Libras at the front at that end too. And I saw there was definitely Scorpio with that. Um, we've got the the Cancer energy possibly. Um, that I'm seeing more Piscean and Scorpio. Eight twelve maybe Leo one seven Capricorn Aries Libra. Very interesting. Going with the flow of it, trusting even, relax and trust and accept what is happening. All right. So this is about trusting whatever's going on this month is like, like pushing you forward for something big, I, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so what do we got for the first half of February for the Scorpios from the Unicorns? Whoa, no way. You got the I Am Presence. Whoa, that's the last card, the final thing. And the spiritual warrior, a perfectionist. I am <laughs> the I am. This is connecting even with that. This is uh, expanding your stellar gateway. The I am presence um, is a master number. It's also talking about Archangel Met Metronon and also being a spiritual warrior. Show you're a wise leader. Command the universe 3744. 4437, four, right? 810. Expand your stellar gateway. So I'm saying there could be a lot of this Cancer energy or um, Aries, actually, Scorpio, as well as Gemini, Libra, and then some Leo energy. This is, um, wow, uh, the I am, pre this is the final thing. This is that, like, reaching, like, all these alignments of the chakra, and you see um, the peaceful lion with the lamb spiritual warrior and a wise leader commanding the universe even commanding you know what i mean your own universe your own world even speaking it out and being why is he a a, a wise leader because there's compassion and strength and confidence god energy with that i'm sorry the i am is i am what i am right <laughs> in the bible and, you know, Popeye, the sailor man. I am what I am. <laughs> That's what came through. The the emotional empath. You are what you are. And maybe you are doing these things, right? That's what you don't even realize sometimes. Maybe you are. Okay, look at this. Like, oh my goodness. What is this even? This crown. The spiritual leader or something. That's what I even say. Wise leader. Okay, and then we got the star, hope, healing, maybe, maybe you have some Aquarius in here, um, or Gemini, Libra, huh, and the tens. Okay, I'm going to split the deck open and see what we got, right? It's a time of receiving now. There might have been a time of waiting, so this is going to be reaping what you've sown. So you've been investing all of your work all the time. Now it's time to receive um, for the hard work you've been doing. I'm grabbing this one. Okay, I feel like 3-7. So, so I'm telling you, 7-3. That cancer energy coming through. 3-7, 3-7. No way, spiritual warrior, 3-7, 3-7. 7-3, 10-10. I'm saying this is someone not going out and partying and wasting their money even, celebrating. Um, and, and because maybe you sacrificed, you know, or things like that and saved money during this time you'll be receiving for what you've you know you receive for your your work 
the magician look at this oh my this is amazing upright because this is having everything you need now to create and manifest whatever it is that you want for your life literally there's emotion involved there's action there's financial backing and there's communication and clarity like speaking it out look the eights up here this infinity this is the gemini energy right three one one three i'm just telling you for some reason march is so big for you guys <laughs> wow i can't believe i got the gemini energy energy like underneath there okay i'm gonna shuffle these and see that's that's what i'm seeing okay so i'm gonna shuffle them and see what needs to come out for the scorpios for february 2024 that first half I was kind of splitting it up for like the first week and a half and then the shift for the um, the first of the readings I did for, for Aquarius season when we entered that. And then everything shifted after the full moon, the Leo full moon. I'm, oh, did you hear that break? Wow, and that's some truth. So the Aquarius energy, wow. So that's what flew out, the Ace of Swords. So seeking clarity and truth. Maybe I'll read out of this book as well. Uh, wow, <laughs> this is good. Eight one one eight, magician. Oh, now I got it in reverse though. Someone feels maybe there could have been someone wants some truth about someone who has some bad uh, hmm, intentions or feeling as though they're they're doing things in the dark, manifesting uh, ill will out of bitterness or not knowing how to actually create uh what they're wanting maybe you're feeling that way or someone wants some clarity on this this gemini energy okay that's what maybe that's what you're you're seeking about this okay let's see what is this ace of swords this clarity about these are a pretty thick uh deck just so y'all know this is pretty challenging Okay, we got Queen of Wands. Wow, okay, falling over here. So something to do with the Piscean energy even. Uh, the Heather, uh, let's see, it's something to do with the Astro Code, Star Codes, Heather Rowan Robbins, fell over there. So I'm gonna leave that there. So this is one in clarity about this feminine energy, whether this be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius feminine, just someone who's very fiery and action oriented. I'm seeing her also as the mother, like she's the cook. There could be a little cancer energy. Like, you know what I mean? Like she's happy taking action and doing her thing. Okay. Okay. Anything else? There's commitment. They're com she's committed. If you're wondering about that, like she's, maybe there's even tourists, but there's commitment there to whatever she's doing. Maybe there was a time where there was some sneaky snuff, sneaky snuff someone found out about. But I see moving forward, like getting out of feeling stuck in their head, six of swords about not having, I'm, I'm also seeing this whole theory, three of cups in reverse again. So someone not having a reunion or coming together, celebrating and partying underneath that is because we got seven of swords in reverse. And I feel like there was something sneaky, but it came to light. Maybe they just told you. They, Maybe they were not telling you, honestly. But you know that um, now that's the truth of it. Like, there's no coming together. They don't want to celebrate or party. I'm going to see what's underneath here. So I shuffle these up, and then I read. the. Okay, we have someone who's very young. Maybe um, it could be some Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. Just... And I'm seeing this is not not having the financial backup to just waste and play and go party, celebrate, um, needing to save money. I'm just seeing it as a lover even. Oh, oh wow. you got the lovers in reverse, but this is the smother lover. So I actually kind of like to see this because this is someone who at one point, maybe not wanting a reunion or to get back together with someone because they were very obsessive. Because I'm also seeing even that Piscean with this lover energy. This is the Gemini card to me. But look at it. He like tried to create and manifest. He was trying to manifest love. And it turned into something that was like a bird. Like he felt so attached and tied. And there was illusion and drinking. I'm just seeing that as they're not wanting a reunion. Or you don't want that. Again, you don't want something that's like that. 
All right, so if there could have been a time where someone was very defensive or blocking this person, but they've been unblocked. Someone's unblocked someone. And so now you can see and get complete clarity. There was a time of maybe looking at, ob there's a lot of Piscean with this, okay, Scorpio, that's what I'm seeing. It's a Piscean. Someone's still holding on to these emotions. You got seven, eight, and eight, seven. Um, no way, seven, seven. Hmm. Six, seven. Okay, I'm just seeing it as um, getting clarity. I, I'm seeing it as like, so coming out of any illusion, but there's still emotions there. They they can't seem to let go of um, some emotions regarding, I mean, there was emotions regarding this not being able to go to a celebration or not, something like that. All right, let's see what was going on behind the seven of swords, okay? One, seven, three, seven, I see one, three, three, one, three, three, no way, seven, three, three, seven. Um, well, so once this is found out, so the seven of swords in reverse is also someone not getting away with something that was sneaky. You know, in this card, truly, he is trying to free her. Like, the intention is good. She's been kind of held captive. He's doing it in darkness to free her because if the other people find out, they're going to stop him, you know. But um, someone, like, you know, this is also, it is deceptive, so it's known now. It's out in the open. Someone already knows the truth. Whatever this was about. Um, three, seven, seven, three. Wow. And they're, so this is, once this comes out, there's no longer waiting. Like, once this information, this is action time. Whoa, no way. Three, three. You got seven, seven, three, three. It's heartbreaking, but I feel like it's also, then it's action time towards healing um, whatever was heartbreaking. If there was like, Three of Swords is usually there's some type of a third party entity or energy. Uh, when I say entity, it could be like, doesn't just have to be romantic, can be family, friends, others, someone else doing something to get in between. Um, and someone feeling heartbroken because somebody even maybe was juggling two, three, three, two. Juggling things. Oh my goodness. And not juggling finances because they didn't have like, oh my. 210. So you're going to find out, I feel like, on the 10th. 10 2. Maybe it has something to do with um, finances and paying. You know, I feel like this is about money too. And, you know, juggling where to pay, who to pay, because we have 10 of coins in reverse. So a huge loss, of, or maybe a loss of, or even selling some. I mean, I'm just seeing it as a loss of legacy business uh land property ten nine nine ten virgo capricorn or libra two ten even aquarius i'm seeing the nine of swords in reverse so um one this it's like this will relieve anxiety there could have been a lot of sleeping um um sleeping in the daytime even like trying to get clarity like even in your dreams of how to do this because someone was stuck in their head nine two two nine trying to have strength to gather the strength to do this to, to this decision to make this decision two two seven eight two eight five eight again two eight and, and seeing someone having this strength but feeling very stuck in your head because you know something truthful about someone and they don't um, know it all or they're seeing something, hearing a conversation of someone else's. See, there is still a third party here, right? And so even the Schmendrick could be the one that's heartbroken, um, you know, because he's seeing something over here. Queen of Cups in reverse. Someone being emotionally manipulating. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. Someone being drunk or uh playing a victim and he know he's like oh my gosh like this Smedrick knows something and he's stuck in his head about communicating telling the truth about it two five even an aquarius but i see king queen of cups in reverse she's like oh my gosh this is a whole act this is something she has 
worked on. She's very immature. She's um, taking a this action that's being taken is to play a victim. Um, there's no passion. There's no true, like, they're not. So just knowing that there's no passion. They could just be really sleepy, depressed, even this feminine. Some of you, this is a uh, Scorpio feminine. Could be a Cancer or Piscean, right? Because, uh, but she is, um, yeah, there's no passion there. I feel like there's just, there was regret and uh, boredom. And uh, so I'm wanting some fun, some happiness and the Leo energy, but trying to get out of boredom and have a good time, have fun. And maybe that's some true emotions, maybe at the full moon even, maybe that Piscean, shining light in this, on these true emotions that are wanting these to feel happy. And laying down the burdens, like no longer wanting to feel so burdened by work. I think someone, uh, and I also see a scene, we see 210 again in 10 two. Um, and I'm seeing it as laying down these heavy burdens and a decision being made. So there was maybe a crossroads of taking action and going to a point and feeling like you had another option or maybe you needed to turn back around and look back at the moon. But yeah, because someone was feeling like the, the growth they were going, they were feeling like they weren't very victorious, feeling very unsuccessful um, around a boss. Uh, a partner, a leader, boss is upright. Something hasn't completed though with this emperor. This could be a husband, a true boss, masculine energy, father, you know, grandfather, whatever. Um, the boss, usually it's Aries Taurus. Oh, soulmate. They're like standing in their power and they've detached emotionally like two of soul or two of cups is in reverse. So underneath that I'm seeing and very unhappy. So we started with that even, right? And seeing that, maybe that was actually in the Libra reading. I'm trying to, but 10-2 again, guys. I don't know what this is about. 10-2 and 210. They've even done like, they, they're done resting and they're still just feeling very unloved and unsupported. They This person, he feels very alone. Like, there isn't family, there isn't people he could count on or trust, he doesn't have companionship. I'm throwing it down. Look, the unicorn is running wild, though. In this Ten of Cups, which is ironic, she is now free. And she's looking back to the past. I even see this truth, looking back over at the I Am presence. And connecting with that higher self to get to this I Am Wow. So I'm seeing this as being done to resting and healing, right? Having a wake up call, um, getting a second chance, even a second chance. Oh, we've got Knight of Wands in reverse. Maybe even stopping being someone who is running around. Someone's giving some, having a wake up call about someone being. I see Knight of Wands. No way. And Justice there. And wow. So some of you dealing with Libra energy, but, and they're like no longer. You know, I'm feeling like they're no, they want things to be fair and they've like stopped running even. They've stopped running. They're having a wake up call, wanting a second chance. Even 920, 910, whatever. 1120. No way. The lovers are reversed though again. There could be legal stuff. Maybe some of you are dealing with, you know, justice, wanting things to be fair and balanced because we've got the lover card in reverse and um, maybe even receiving something. Like I'm, I'm saying you're maybe receiving some settlement money or something or something you've spent this time and you invested a lot of time and you didn't get your wishes fulfilled. You weren't getting what you were hoping for. 9779. Damn. However, however, there's a sense of coming out of any type of, um, self-sabotage or depression or woe is me uh feeling depressed about it and like a wounded warrior like you're trapped and you gotta protect yourself from others nine five five nine a lot about the virgo coming out from feeling virgo mode or feeling like you've got to isolate yourself 
um, because of, I, I'm saying this is that's what's happened. Like the healing has been, uh, you got Virgo Scorpio here. Interesting enough. Things didn't end, like someone didn't die. Things have not completely transformed. Um, oh my gosh, with an Aquarius even, someone still feels like they've lost hope. I'm seeing someone still holding on. They're holding on, this is about finances even, being a little greedy. Uh, they've still lost hope and they feel stuck in their head because there's lovers in reverse. So even though they're trying not to, it, it's like it's there's it's still in their head, but it, it's trying to emotionally detach from certain things. Wow, the devil, <laughs> the some fear, um, something that binds them, something that's toxic. You know, um, whether it be could even be you know, devil can be. Um, a lot of times, it's, it is fear, but it's something that might control us. Even it can be addictions. Um, Capricorn. Someone feels stuck and trapped. 815. Like they cannot move. They cannot take action. Like they are very trapped. Oh, very trapped. They could be very, um, they can't even drive maybe. They're, uh, it could be, like I said, addiction or there's f so much paranoia or fear. Um, this king of coins, oh my gosh. So some of you, it's dealing with a, a Capricorn. He's upside down. Not letting someone move or travel or go anywhere. Ace of coins, not giving any money. Hey, very, maybe there's a big loss, like not gonna pay for your car or your trip or give you cash to do these things even. Oh wow, 110. There's the 10 of swords, 10-1, 1010. That's it. Like, that's that final straw. Like, realizing he's not giving a, 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 you're not getting your gift. You're not getting a bonus. They're not going to help you with something, a car or a trip or a move. Uh, it has something to do with, um, this is about, you need to do this work, I guess. They're going to make you do this. <laughs> Whatever happened in the past. Well, I'm, be, I'm saying it's past because we've got Ten of Swords in reverse. So, it's already, and it has to do with maybe love, right? and work something about those things uh maybe oh, man it's a lot of work overcoming this hurt this betrayal the hanged man a virgo even getting caught getting stuck i'm seeing 12 8 maybe sagittarius are 8 12 even Someone gets caught, though, and they have to see this other perspective. Yeah, there's a lot of Virgo. Taking their time really slowly, trying to pay attention to all the little details, um, trying to, and, and saving and balancing so that you can be, uh, you know, stable, single, financially stable. Maybe they're just not taking, they're not communicating this with you. There's no communication from that. It's all focused on work and um building uh you know the legacy the nine of coins is moving and then moving forward to the ten of coins so no communication with this queen of coins Ooh, okay uh so for some of you there's that capricorn virgo taurus right could be any of them she's not communicating do you found new love there's new love here and someone is not trusting. Oh. They're not trusting their intuition about this. Or someone might have told someone or shared some information regarding love. Um, I think this is it. Like, maybe the communication is blocked. There's no communication. And so... Mm, Knight of Swords... Something was, some communication that came in was very rude and cutting. And it might have been dishonest um, from this feminine energy. King of Swords, oh my gosh. So I've got Piscean, I've got Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, masculine, that came in quickly with some information. And I'm seeing it as rude, wrong, untactful, not trusting intuition, not loving. 
And then we've got the tower. There's your card. That communication creates this tower. And and we're not over yet. Things aren't over. Because you got the... <laughs> the world's in reverse. So this cycle hasn't completed. This chapter is not over yet. But it's so close. And that's why... So we're moving on, right, to this Six of Swords, like moving forward after all these different hurts, these thoughts, the communication. She's just trying to move on and find something that's very, so someone who's committed, maybe even having the same types of values, spiritual beliefs even, and that that was follow through. That is like, she looks like she's walking towards this Taurus energy even. <laughs> or commitment even that's what i'm saying someone who's committed whoa king of wands okay wow passion so uh, aries leo sagittarius and taurus here interesting enough i like seeing these upright okay scorpios i i, I just see that things are not fair with the give and take though that's what this was what this is showing things are not fair with the give and take okay we've got empress here so that feminine, if you're uh, the feminine, the wife, the mother, um, could also, you know, and then we've got the Hierophant and the King of Wands. So I'm just saying this is someone you're committed to or married to even, and the give and take has not been fair, but they're both upright. And this Empress is upright doing things, you know, taking control, look, making nutritious, you need some carrots, some stew. Oh, who? But someone wants to fight and compete. This person over here who is angry about something and they're stalking and spying. Look at this. Okay, guys, this is the Gemini magician upside down wanting to fight, create chaos and contention. This is a third party energy trying to create. Um, so he shed, she shed stuff, and mess with their minds so that they all fight. Look, this, this, this Gemini, this magician, whoever this is, they've been stalking and spying. And maybe they're seeing some competition. They see someone as competition or fighting. And they have some ill will. But they what they see, they like. So, so they like what they see. Maybe they see someone. Maybe they're seeing some of this. You know, it's almost like they want re revenge, you know, or something like they're in a negative energy, negative thoughts. They f somehow feel that's what I see it is. Whew. Now we're going to flow through this one. Okay, we're going to move forward. And look, 3868, excuse me, 6336. So moving forward, like I'm saying, let's move, move forward, collaborating, working together with others. So she's like leaving you know all of this chaos with that five of five of wands even and five of swords wow someone does not want a new beginning somewhere else they're just gonna they're gonna stay there work collaborate maybe even spying looking in to see how things are working um maybe this is dealing with aries but not wanting to be foolish not wanting to take a leap of faith and and someone from your past someone from your childhood nostalgia um, someone you've known since you were a child or uh, for a long time. There's a lot of memories already built. Maybe even it's from past life. These are good. So that's what I'm saying is someone doesn't want like some new beginning elsewhere. They're willing to collaborate and work where they're at. Temperance, wow. And yeah, do the work even. Pilled potatoes. There's water with this. This fire energy. This is... Him, you know, even thinking in his head about communicating. This is balancing spirituality and earthly. This is balancing time alone and time with friends. Um, not overindulging in food, alcohol, gambling. This is really being able to, um, you know, have a balanced mind, body, and spirit. And oh, not overindulging in this hedonistic pleasures or you know what I mean thinking things through queen of swords in reverse okay she's like pointing fingers and saying right here whoever this is it could be Gemini for some of you because of the, the, that Gemini energy so feminine could be Libra could be uh, Aquarius but she's pointing fingers I'm saying her point at this queen of wands something 
maybe the full moon in uh, Piscean energy when we get to, it'll be a full moon in Virgo. So I'm seeing this is deceptive and lying. Even we got King of Cups right here. So this couple period is upside down. Uh, there could be overindulging, playing a victim. I, I see this as like cutting words and being very rude while they're intoxicated, actually overindulging. Oh, you got that Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Okay, a couple maybe that you know of. Maybe they're um, they're a couple, but they're not actually married. I'm seeing it as like they're they're king and queen. They're an older couple, but I don't think they have children or anything like this. I, I'm not seeing them as actually. They're really, in, it's a toxic relationship that these people have. Okay, I just, that's all I'm saying um wow this is moving out of feeling like pushed away like you've let, lost something and moving like this is home feeling like home five four so maybe even dealing with taurus i'm saying i seeing like a lot of um nice commitment with the earth energy the taurus energy maybe and the leo energy okay for the feminine even um could be and the Sagittarius, the Temperance looked very upright too. The King of Wands was upright, remember? So, the Wands energy is up. We have good fortune with this divine timing, even with your home, family coming out of maybe that there could have been a time of maybe feeling pushed away from her, from your family or home, um, or feeling like you've lost something. But I'm seeing the good karmic stuff. The Wheel of Fortune upright to me is always. A very divine timing and receiving for, you know, what you've put out. And it's upright. Okay, we do have someone a little unapologetic right here. An amateur, Knight of Cups and Page of Cups. So very young energy. Um, but still, there's some compassion or love. Maybe even wanting to go for a drink or something. And that's where I end that. Oh my goodness. Scorpios. That was a lot. Let's move this out of here. I ran almost the whole deck, basically, for you. Okay, so over here, especially if you got this fire sign, you're dealing with a fire sign, Scorpios. You can have this in your chart, too. Um, and then we're moving into the Piscean energy. I'm going to pull this uh, star codes. <laughs> and we have the seashell there, remember? Seashell, seashell. What time is it? 102.12. Oh, my gosh. I got to get going. Got to move quicker. The sixth house, sustainability. Okay, so fire. So you could have Aries, Leo, Sagittarius as your sixth house. Okay, so you have a fire. Uh, so that could mean you have. So I'm like thinking things through now. I don't know. <laughs> no, so it'd be an earth sign possibly. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It'd be an earth sign in your partnership if that's. Uh, the case and an earth sign rising if that's the case for you but I'm also seeing this about your day-to-day -day life and your health right and taking the time no way you got 44 we started with 44 the I am presence I am I am 44 yes I am uh, this is also to me Aries or Cancers right and Scorpio plus the Virgo energy um wow and then let's see, no way, and 10th house. So we got 6th and 10th house spotlighted, 610. So about your career, um, your day-to-day -day life. Wow, I told you a lot of earth energy spotlighted for Scorpios. 44 and 48, so there's four. A four-year difference or something even. Let's see, 8, 9, 12, 8, 12. There's some Leo. So it's also about the day-to-day -day life, your sustainability and your authority, how you're seen in the world. Your career is how other people see you, what you, you know, this is what you do on the day-to-day -day, the, under the iceberg, right? Or the stuff that people don't always see, all those little details, all the work that you do, um, your list making, your food preparation, but it might be more well known out into the world, you know, on social networking and media and, you know, what you you know your career is capricorn wow i'm seeing a lot of aries like i said and then the cancer sign energy too scorpio okay i'm gonna shuffle those those were fascinating mm. 
So those were some areas that were spotlighted then <laughs> for the second half of February or your February when you hit the Piscean energy. What else do we have for Scorpios during this uh, Piscean? No way your first house is coming through. Well, bump the camera. Wow, so Libra's also got this. This is quite a bit. I also see harvest and a nurturer. Whoa, I'm seeing a 10-year difference even right here, 39, 3, 9. So 3, 9, I think you guys are a Gemini or a Pisces, Sagittarius, uh, 12, 29, maybe Capricorn, 12, 11, or Sagittarius. As, uh, or it could be in your first house. You could be any of... You know, that's how you're seen in the world, even as a nurturer, the harvester. This is mothering, too. So there could also be Aquarius or Taurus, Sagittarius. This is Scorpionic right here. This is harvest, nurturing, the grains, getting grounded. So let's see, no way. Then we have the thinker, the asteroid, Pallas Athena. Maybe some of you have Pallas Athena. This is about wisdom, Athena and beauty in your first house, the thinker, right? how you're seen in the world as a perfectionist <laughs> sorry and a thinker maybe it's totally virgo i don't even know no and then this is about your progression your journey through life even maybe looking at where you were oh we see there is some opposition 53 56 so dealing with tauruses uh leos virgos gemini's an opposition so wherever your sun is or your rising or your moon just think of that as the opposite sign if someone has a sun or a moon or rising or venus or mercury or whatever in that opposite sign there could be an opposition where you know things don't line up you have different points of view and there's a butting of heads so you could also check where your progression is i guess um and see where you're at on your astrological chart as you because it starts from your time of birth right um as a baby and how you're seen in the world there's the aries energy right um to start out with and then as you journey along you your sign your planets things do shift really slowly though but like for an example i'm probably a scorpio now <laughs> i'm like i'm probably a scorpio now because i'm a libra but you know what I mean? In my progressions um, and things like that, if I were to look and see how things kind of shift. But, you know, you do what you think you need to do. So there is this opposition with an 11th house. Oh, look, it's even with your community. So with Aquarius, ah, Leo Aquarius. But um, maybe there's this op opposition or confrontation with someone in your friends group online even maybe they're in Aries a Cancer or a Sagittarius uh I'm seeing 8 9 10 11 12 8 12 Leo wow first house an 11th house 111 and then we've got this nurturer so I find this fascinating we got Ceres Pallas Athena and Ceres how many cards one two three four five six Six cards. Hmm. Let's see if I can get a couple more. I see seventh house in relationships and there's tension there. Um, a square. Dealing with a Taurus. Or, a, uh, I almost said a Leo, but um, Aries. No way, 45 and 54, 9-9. Nine, nine. So maybe Virgo too, 9-22, 4 nine. Whatever that means for you guys. <laughs> What is this 22 card? Mars. Okay, the Mars and Jupiter. Abundance and wisdom. Okay, so. And Jupiter just fell out. This wisdom, this abundance. So this magnifies everything to um, 1123. Uh, maybe very specific for some of you. 11.5. Uh, wow. The second house and resources. 7.2. Seven, seven, so partnership, even with um, what you value, where you spend your money, Taurus, Libra energy, you know, I'm seeing that as well. What is this opposition? Maybe, hmm, I feel like the opposition would happen anyways, even with progression. You know what I mean? Like, it, would it change? I don't know. Let's get this final one. Chiron. Wow. 
wounded healer. So seeing where Chiron is in your chart, I believe Chiron is transiting in the Aries energy. I'm mine personally is in Taurus. Um, maybe two eight something being spotlighted. I see eight twenty eight and eight ten, five twenty eight, five ten. The Wounded Healer, Chiron, okay, and Aries, wow, yeah, yeah, so taking action on this, 128, okay, wow, so it is the 26th, I'm doing this, maybe you're getting it on this time, I know this is for February's energy, but whenever you do get it, you, you know, if there's something that helps get you going or gets you in action, then, then wonderful, you don't have to just wait around for it to happen, this is also where we look into these things to see which direction to take, which course of action, right? Capricorn and Aries, whoa, whoa, 110. <laughs> Taking action towards how you're seen in the world, your career, stability, uh, like face to face. Oh, wow. All right, so I'm going to finish it off with this Cavana site. I never finished I, uh, with the sacred force. We're going to do that too. But expanding your consciousness, especially during this Pisces season, the storytellers, soothsayers, healers, therapists, and psychics. Where to put it? Wherever you translate inspiration into the written or spoken word. When to use it. When it's time to speak clearly and straight from the heart. When you want to get weird, ask Cavana Sight to make you a conduit for messages mysterious and eternal. What it is, Cavana Sight is a calcium vanadium silicate. Vana, vanadium silicate. Its name is an acronym. Mm, it is C A vanadium calcium van and sight. Hmm. It's vivid color. It's next level electric blue. The best Kavanasite hails from India. It's a go-to stone for those looking to channel messages from a high or explore the possibilities of supernatural communication. Right. Okay, that's why I was like, yes, let's keep this one. And then this orange, I don't know what that one is. The honey calcite is a breakthrough your limits. Instead of banging your forehead repeatedly on your desk, try a gentle kiss of honey calcite there instead. Wow, Taurus energy. Who needs it? Anyone with a job to do. The brilliant but lazy. Any Taurus. What it is, a honey-hued mi mineral on a mission to turn the bewildered and bumbling into super-driven worker bees. Worker bees, honey. Honey bees. When to use it? When the barriers to abundance feel too big to power through. When it's time to stop waiting your turn and stop waiting until tomorrow. Picture yourself triumphant on the other side of whatever stands in your way and call on honey calcite to kick in the door. Dang, I love these. The blue and orange for you guys. I do want to take a peek of what this is. Oh, I know what this is. This one I think is ruby. Yeah, that's going to magnify and amplify action. Jasper. Strengthening your foundation. All air signs need this in city folk. Hmm. And then taking action. So I'm going to save these for, for a different time. And I'm going to jump into finish this off with the sacred forest. So remembering this as well. If you're feeling, you know, um, sympathy pains or physical pains. Or you're feeling depleted, uh, you know. Take care of yourself. Do what you feel guided to do. I feel like in the Pisces season too, there's going to be so much of this, you know, salt water healing, uh, bubble baths, you know, dreaminess, really tune in with the water. And, um, you know, if you're around certain people, sometimes you can, um, you know, you can sense what they need and then tell them or, uh, you know, help them in a way. Or get them out of your life. <laughs> your choice. So we got the starfish too. The little orange. I love how this the orange one and the honey calcite. Hmm. Hmm. And there is a lot of Taurus here. So maybe you're really dealing with Taurus at this this end part. Some of you have, you know, that's your opposite, which is interesting. There's also Aquarius and some Leo. Okay, let's see. I'm going to split this in. Wow, the unicorn purity. 
oh my gosh, four, five. So we go four, 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 and then four, five. The purity of the unicorn and the innocence. Wow. Okay, wow. So before I forget, because I do want to read a little message out of the book. Wow, so I have the temperance here. And temperance did come up there, right? This is that Sagittarian energy, right? But I'm going to read what it says about for you. Prince Lear sits on the kitchen bench, studiously peeling potatoes, a momentary portrait of calm in the midst of a battering wave surrounding the castle, and his mind is focused on nothing but the task at hand. He has his work cut out for him and is only just beginning his labors. He has not yet learned how not to cut himself, but the lesson will be learned by practice. The application of self and the helpful advice of Molly even a prince is not above kitchen duty. Mm. Avoiding extremes and balancing your emotions and viewpoints, temper suggests taking the middle ground and seeking moderation in both thought and action. This is a card of deliberate transformation and sensibility. With awareness throughout the process, this is the time to be the peacekeeper or to seek common ground and a diplomatic approach. You are best served by finding ways to successfully mix the components of your circumstances into a greater harmony and making them work together to form something better. Wow. The purity even. The first house and how you see yourself. Wow. I want to open this one too. And the meandering pathway going with the flow. <laughs> so we got 924, maybe some Libra or 96, some Virgo, even going with the flow in the meandering pathway. I love this. The purity. This is a returning to innocence during this uh, Piscean energy. Okay, it's 222 maybe, uh, you know, as we shift over. Or 229, it's a leap year this year, guys. No way. So, yeah, Unicorn Purity is definitely coming out for you. I just shuffled and, uh, wow, so many unicorns. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Anything else for, I almost called you Pisces, for the Scorpios? Spirit guardian of summer expansion. Maybe this is about March. Even some Aries. Three, seven. Hmm. Ten, nine, ten again. Expansion and growth. So the summer energy even is giving going to give you this. Um, it, that's what's coming through. It's to give you this spark of new passion and growth and exploring abundance wealth there's libra gemini with that too um whoa and the wild rose fairy 47 and love dude aries cancer libra 79 10 10 10 again oh my gosh 9 10 10 10 love even healing this is chiron wounded warrior also makes me think of a little bit of Sagittarius. So I pull in Taurus with it and as well. And now Aries with the Chiron energy. Okay. Anything else from the sacred forest? From the Lynn? Okay. Yeah. And um, Maple Spirit, generosity and being very giving. Two, three. The 23rd even possibly. Even there is this nurturing, this Saris. This is about harvesting even and then being very generous and giving. And then you got these ones come over here. Wow, the rainbow, the dragon. Oh, no way, guys. I'm so excited. You got the, the dragon power. Wow. 11. <laughs> okay, okay, Scorpios. Here we go. Here we go. I got 11, 8. I got 11, 9. 9, 10, 12. I got 11, 12. 11, 30. Wait, there's no 11, 30. Yes, there is. Yes, never mind. 12, 12, 12 again. I got 10, 12. Nine, 10, no, I got 12, 13, 12, 11, 11, 31. Oh, look at, see, there's no 11, 31. It's 3, 1. And then 41. No, I got 31, 41. So I guess, interesting, I keep seeing like a 10 year. So I look over here, this first house and 11th house. Even with someone um, who you're friends with, partnership groups there's like a 10 year difference in your age even i am 44 i am 39 i am 49 <laughs> these could all just be different ages do i don't know why but i'm i'm 23 
the dragon power. So this is even being comforted and supported by uh, working with the dragons. So I've definitely been working with dragons and I'm going to be pulling more dragons in and then believing in miracles, the rainbow waterfall and the starry night. Oh my goodness. And finding this acceptance this is going to change everything. So we got 31, 41, four, five. No wait, you got four, five, four, five, four, five, two, four, two, five. Finding acceptance with this on the starry night this there's this miracle there's strength and guardianship like this this power from the dragons it is the year of the chinese new year oh my gosh maybe i'm i forgot to bring it up so chinese new year right uh it's the year of the wood dragon for 2024 mm. wow power miracles acceptance purity expansion and then generosity as well. And that's even that that flow, this expansion is this abundance wisdom. It's that Sagittarian stuff. And, he, and then rainbows and miracles and this amazing starry night. And being at peace with wherever you are. Even healing, I think, with this Chiron energy. Whoa, Scorpios, those are beautiful. I'm not going to read out of the book with those. But I also see this as a passage like uh you know making it through this this month is beautiful for you it, it it is it truly is um i hope you have enjoyed scorpios thanks so much bye bye